Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. The Carrack is one of my favourite ships in Star Citizen and there's been a reasonable amount of info about it in the last couple of months which I wanted to talk about. Kind of an all we know on the Carrack at the moment. What is the Carrack? Originally a stretch goal ship for when they hit $33 million in funding from the original blurb. The Carrack is a multi-crew explorer that specializes in exploration and pathfinding. It is built as a single self-sustaining ship that can make long duration voyages through the roughest areas of space. It's designed specifically for transitioning jump points, dealing with extreme conditions in space and getting back home. Since its time in the military, it's been the vanguard of every UEE exploration effort in recent years. Combined with high tensile hull armor, the Carrack is one of the safest exploration ships in the galaxy. The Carrack is now declassified and is available for civilian use. And on the ship page, it currently reads the Anvil Carrack features reinforced fuel tanks for long duration flight, an advanced jump drive and dedicated computer core for jump charting operations. Originally a military exclusive, the Carrack is now available for civilian use. Onboard accommodations include crew, medical and repair facilities, and a mapping orientated sensor suite. So the Carrack was originally 123 meters long, and since its concept, it's now been made 125 meters long. Typically, the older ships that were planned get much bigger because they used to build the exterior roughly before the interior. It's now the other way around where they build the interior and then actually build the exterior on top of that so they sort of like know the metrics much better. But why didn't the Carrack get bigger then? Well, during its white boxing, they actually made it a lot bigger, around 40% bigger in fact, but realized that they didn't need to. The focus of the ship is exploration, so it being small for that while having everything it needs is much more sensible for its intention. It's not a carrier, it's not a cargo ship. Being larger in this particular case does not make it better, nor does having more space, although you could argue having a larger cargo bay or something like that, or a uh, larger um, bay for ships or something would be cool, but it certainly doesn't necessarily make it better at its intended purpose. It's an explorer. Smaller means faster, more nimble, more efficient, and harder to hit in combat. This size also allows it to land on landing pads and in hangars more easily. So you'd be able to land on the pads in Port Olisar at the moment, for example. Those pads will literally fit it. Technically, on the Kraken 2, maybe on the top, though not properly, you know, you could sort of sort of get it in there. But also this enables it to be used in atmosphere much more readily too, which is very useful for an exploration ship. It looks to be around 64 meters wide and 32 meters high at the moment, at last count anyway. It's a six person ship. Its components are all large rather than capital size. In fact, it's sort of like just on the border of having capital size components, meaning it does lose out on the power of these capital size items, but is items are much more easy to serve, replace, switch out, and assumably repair, as well as obviously being cheaper. It's currently listed as having two shield generators, two coolers, two intakes for fuel, and two tanks for fuel, as well as three medium computers. I believe medium is the largest size of computer plan for the game at the moment. These computer slots can be used for a variety of yet unrevealed purposes, but also we do know that one of these is the automation of turrets and point defense systems. It's being built by Anvil and originally for military purposes, so expect it to be pretty tough with possible top tier military component upgrades available. I also saw four turrets in the current grey box for it, each with two weapons, so I would guess that these weapons are size four to five each, so potentially eight size four weapons, eight size five weapons, or a mixture of the two. Um, last info we had on this as well, that three of those turrets were manned and one of them is remote, although that might entirely change. Obviously, there's going to be balancing and they haven't finished the Carrack. The Carrack is in active development with a team of five working on it full time in the UK office. They have the interior worked out and are getting the exterior done now. It's likely that it will be flyable in 2019, probably sitting around 3.7, 3.8 alpha. So uh, in the second half of the year. The Carrack was $400 when it was last on sale during the Anniversary Expo 2948. So what does the Carrack do? The Carrack is the top tier exploration and expedition ship. It's supposed to be used long range to do everything that you can think of that's exploration under the sun. 
Although the Carrack's focus is on exploration, it can do a bit of everything as well. It has a repair bay, a medical bay, living quarters for its six crew, cargo, engineering, a bay for drones, a bay for a rover, a bay for a snub sort of scout craft, the Pisces. So the snub bay is almost big enough to take an arrow, although the arrow is slightly too tall. It should fit other snubs though, so you get like an 85X in there, I think. All these rooms are separated into two main decks. However, there is also an additional sort of like exploration observation area at the top of the ship and a small lower or sub deck underneath the ship, it looks like as well. Sort of like where the rover comes out of and that sort of stuff. I suppose it's technically four decks then. There was a link on Reddit, which I used here, Kettle96's um, old to new comparison of the Carrick, which I will uh, chuck down in the description below for people that want to see that original post. The ship's bridge is supposed to incorporate various sensor mapping and charting suites for deeper exploration gameplay as well. It has that Pisces scout ship as well, which we don't know much about other than it's a small snub craft, P-52 kind of size. It has drones, it has a ground rover, it can do a little bit of everything, and those drones are probably going to be used for exploration because they're scout drones they're supposed to be anyway. Let's talk about the Carrack's potential uses for exploration and expedition gameplay. We obviously don't know everything that's going to be with exploration and expedition but they have talked some about it and uh, we do know some of the direction that this sort of gameplay is going to be going into. Jump point discovery, mapping, plotting, that's all supposed to be a thing. In fact, it's obviously in the original blurb. There's going to be lots of different discoverable points of interest, asteroid fields, pirate bases, anomalies, and a lot more in space that the Carrack is perfectly suited to find. Information selling is going to be a major part of the game, and that is part of the exploration game. Mapping, finding these locations, finding resources to exploit. That is part of exploration, and the Carrack is very suited at doing that very well. In fact, its sensors are probably great for all types of detection. Scanning down ships and fleets should be pretty viable for it. It's got good sensors and mapping facilities, basically. There's been previous talk about mapping jump points, placing nav beacons, scout drones. If there's static maps you can create in the Persistent Universe by exploring an area, then the Carrack will also be perfect for this but expect it to be able to do almost every type of exploration type gameplay. Exploration in Star Citizen isn't the same as it is in No Man's Sky. There aren't an infinite amount of solar systems and star systems to kind of go and explore. I do imagine that some people will travel um, jump points to the edge of the sort of like known universe and then fly to the edges of those systems and then try and scan down interesting points of interest. But every system in the game, every star system, should have exploration mechanics to do around it. There's going to be lots of points of interest around. The Carrack is obviously supposed to be able to operate for huge periods of time or potentially indefinitely with the right loadout, making it very good for exploration as well. Or just spending huge amounts of time out around the edges of uh, a system, just looking for stuff, just playing out there without having to deal with other players, I suppose, in a lot of situations. More surveying stuff, using the character to discover asteroid fields and potential plots of land on planets makes a lot of sense as well. The Carrack being able to deploy the, that rover, the scout ship, and being small enough means it can get to more places to find and do more things. The Carrack is also a long-range multi-role corvette. In fact, I expect for a lot of players it will be a ship that they will drive towards that is affordable in game with some effort but doesn't come with the gigantic sort of capital ship price tag and i'm expecting them to be the center pieces of some smaller fleets you might argue that it's not corvette size but it's it's close enough it's it's pretty much a corvette it it is large components rather than capital components but it's got all the sort of facilities a, a capital ship would have and I, I judge it as a corvette but it's just a name i suppose more than anything else I would expect it to be twice what the Hammerhead costs in game, so roughly maybe 40 million UEC. I know lots of people keep on asking about how much do you think ships will be in game. That is something I am pulling out of my ass, but it makes sense that it would be around twice the cost of that. It's got a lot more facilities and stuff like that. The Carrack should have a reasonable punch with its weapons as well, but it isn't intended to be a straight-up combat ship like the Polaris or the Hammerhead. It does have a huge amount of utility, though. Some things that we don't know that would be cool to know in the near future is how is it going to be affected by the new flight model? Will it get more thrusters and VTOLs? I kind of want to know what it's going to be like in atmosphere. 
It's been suggested that the ship might have some modularity beyond the standard customization of ships, but I don't have any more information on that. If it's got some customizable rooms, great. Uh, the exact layout would be nice to know. The amount and placement of elevators and stairs in the ship. It's important to know how to get around. The ship is obviously smaller than a giant ship, but it's still pretty damn big. And there's going to be repair in the future where you running around and uh, repairing sub subjunction boxes and stuff like that. It's going to be important to have power going around the ship properly and to get to different items around your ship that might have... Uh, been damaged, might need repair, might need uh, components changing, that sort of stuff. The extent to what exploration gameplay we will have is still unknown. We do know it's going to cross into the science sort of gameplay and lots of other roles and gameplay loops though. It's going to touch a lot of different things. I'm hoping that the character is going to be well suited for surveying land or maybe you can put a vehicle inside it, replace the rover with something that's better at suited at surveying land because uh, then you can do so much with that character. And along with the Reclaimer, it's going to be probably one of the ships that I spend most of my time in once we have those gameplay loops to support it. But what do you think of the Karak? Do you like it being 125 meters or did you want it a lot bigger? Were you disappointed the fact they didn't make it 40% bigger? Or do you have a different favorite ship? Do you go, nah, the Karak is nothing on my Banu Merchantman or my Polaris? Tell me in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway for a Star Citizen ship. For January, we have a standalone Anvil Carrack, the Mighty Explorer Vessel. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my videos released during the month. You can find more details in the comments below. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac, or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch, and be sure to use the code BOARDGAMER if you do decide to check it out to get a discount. Links below. For those of you wanting to support the channel further, there is Patreon, but, and I will be looking for an alternative platform as well for people that have requested that, but in addition, or as an alternative to that at the moment, there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video, or direct donations via the links below as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me. Any feedback or opinions is greatly appreciated and helps guide the channel working out what content is a good idea to put out next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.